Hello, hello, it's Julie Davison from juliedavison.com. Welcome to Thursday Night Stamp Therapy. I'm so happy you are joining me. It is Thursday, January 18th, and I've got some fun projects to share with you. I am going into the January through April 2024 mini catalog, and can you guess what I'm doing? I've got my project supply list, so you might have a guess. If you've been watching for a while, you know I absolutely love to case the catalog. And what does case the catalog mean? Well, some people um, define case as copy and share everything or copy and steal everything. But I love the definition of copy and selectively edit. And so today I'm going to show you how you can be inspired by projects from the mini catalog designed by Stampin' Up! concept artists and how you can make some changes or copy them exactly and make them your own. Do you love to case the catalog? I always challenge my team. Every time there's a new catalog, I always challenge my team to case the catalog. It's their favorite challenge. And oh my gosh, we've had so much sharing in our Jubilant Stampers team Facebook group. It's so fun to see how everyone has been inspired by the catalog and how they are um, <laughs> creating projects. And so tonight we are going to case at least three projects. I say at least three because I do have um, another one in mind that I really wanted to make. Um, so we'll see how we're doing on time. I actually also bought a really fun product at the dollar store that I kind of want to play with. So we're definitely going to see how we're doing on time. So let's dig in and get started. Now, um, I already in the video description for you have put um, a link to the um, supply list that Stampin' Up! has created. So this is a document that shows, oh, I don't know why it printed in black and white. Okay, well, it's available in color and you'll, um, you'll get the hang of it. So each page has um, projects from the catalog. And so it has the page number in the catalog and a picture of the individual project. And then it gives you the details. Now it doesn't give you like all the measurements and instructions, but it will tell you the products that they used. Um, it will tell you some tips or, you know, some basic instructions. Um, and it, it's a starting point. So if you see something in your catalog and you're like, oh, I really love that. What color did they use? Or what designer paper did they use? Or like, what dye is that? Um, you can check out the supply list. So in the video description right now, you'll see the link for this. This is a document that Stampin' Up! publishes. Um, and the, the concept artists who create the projects are the ones who put together these lists for us. So they're the ones who know. Um, now, if you're a demonstrator, this document can be found on the demonstrator website website under business resources print lab under the products category but I've linked it up it's available for everyone to look at so I've linked it up in the video description for you so that you can um, find it there so happy to see you guys chatting <laughs> in the um, in the chat tonight thank you so much for being here Rita got her paper share yay I'm so happy that it arrived okay um, I had somebody else sign up today and I sent out an invoice I've got a new package of paper that just arrived so it's not too late if you're interested um, and and participating in the paper share and getting a little sampling of all the designer paper. This is a great way to do it is the product share where you can just try all the paper and then you have a little bit to make some of the cards that you see in the catalog. Okay, so we're gonna start first by looking at some projects that I've already cased because I just love to do it always. It's where I start for my inspiration. I start right here in the catalog. So I'm gonna show you some cards I've already done and then we're going to create some new projects and I'm gonna play with some product I haven't used and um, and then a couple others that I have used okay so let me jump right in I actually have the the um, the projects like right here in in the catalog so on page 34 I was inspired by the hot air balloon bundle this is part of the lighter than air sweet on page 32 and 33 and I created this card and you might remember I shared it during my 12 days of Christmas video I wasn't able to share 
I think maybe also my unboxing video. Either way, I wasn't able to show you my inspiration, but now I can. So I was inspired by this card, which is a slimline card, but I just really loved stamping the blue on blue. I changed the clouds to white. I, I kept the same kind of color of the lemon lolly in the balmy blue, but I left out the pink because I just wasn't, um, wasn't keen on that. So that is kind of how it goes when you case the catalog and copy and selectively edit. You can be inspired by one portion, maybe the color combination or the stamp set or the technique that they used and then you can change some details to kind of make it your own. So on my card I have the front cut off a little bit and a strip of designer paper on the inside. This paper comes from that um, lighter than air designer paper and I got my color inspiration from there as well. So balmy blue and lemon lolly. I just love that lighter than air. So fun. All right, let's move to our next inspiration in the Nature Sweetness Suite on page 40. I I was kind of stumped <laughs> by this suite. And so I definitely um, got some inspiration from the catalog. So I was looking at this card right here. And um, I really loved the layering, but you could hardly see the designer paper in the background. And so I decided to cut my focal point. I used a different one of the images from that designer paper and I cut it down so it was a little skinnier so you could see more of the designer paper in the background. And then I just changed the color. Instead of lemon lime twist, I used some old olive. But again, it's basically kind of the same card. So minimal changes there. And like I said, I was a little um, stumped by this one. So I also case the catalog here on page 43. I copied this sample using the Notes of Nature stamp set. I die cut some pieces from the designer paper, which is what they've done in the sample. And then I stamped and colored um, some of the leaves in Old Olive. I used a um, pecan pie deckled circle in the background and added some of the, um, the I was going to say twine. It's not twine. It's the faux leather trim. Um, and that is actually in addition. The original card doesn't have that, but I just kind of wanted to incorporate um, that in there. And then I also added some of the cork dots. And so um, that, those were some ways that I kind of changed that to make it my own right there. Uh, and I also changed the background. So this is a vanilla card base and I changed it to old olive and I just love the way that that pops. All right, moving right along. Oh, I love that one. Maybe we'll have to make that one too because it's gonna be quick and easy. Okay, so earlier this week, I had a Zoom with my team. I just love it. It's my very favorite part of the um, of the month. I have a Zoom with my team and we do mystery stamping and we just kind of do a show and tell and share. And it's just like a total creative time. We don't talk about business. We don't do anything like that. We just say hello, talk to each other and stamp together. And I just love it. So our mystery stamping project was based on this card from page 50 of the catalog. I was inspired in copying it very closely. Instead of doing the circle on circle or circle on um, the cardstock here, I used an embossing folder, the basics 3D embossing folder, but I used the same image, the same paper here. I changed out the greeting and used Azure Afternoon instead of Calypso Coral. And then I didn't do the die cuts, but I did add some iridescent discs. I changed it up and created a second version using the same layout with the Be Mine and Be My Valentine um, suite. I thought, oh, I'm just going to go for it. I did a pink bee. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> Yay or nay? Is that pink bee um, two out of the box? Or do you think it's okay for Valentine's Day? You make my heart buzz. I love the way that one turned out. So same layout, totally inspired right there on page 50 of the catalog. I know, so cute. Okay, let's move on. This card was one that I shared during my 12 Days of Christmas video. I love the way this turned out. I used a window sheet to create a window. Um, and so on the inside, you can see I covered it with paper and you can kind of see through um, that window. Well, this card was inspired by this one in the catalog, same layout. I just changed up the colors and I added the window sheet. So I kind of made that a fun little peek through card instead of using the frame as they did. I also changed up the colors and instead of using wild wheat and boho blue, I used moody mob and bubble bath. 
I know, I know, I love the way this one turned out. I added a different ribbon in here and just simplified with one flower instead of the cluster. This is that Poetic Expressions Suite and oh my gosh, this is the only card I've made with it but I can't wait to get back in and use some more of these stamp images and the designer paper and especially these dies. I just love the fun stitch labels that come in this set. There are two different shapes. Um, and two, like two, two different shapes. And then like, look at this, six different sizes of this one and four of the more rectangular ones. So even if you just get it for the dies, I think this is a really fun one to get. All right. Oh, this one's trying to peek out. I love the way this one turned out. I shared this card during a Sunday Stimpy stamping episode in which I shared the Adoring Hearts bundle and the Most Adored designer paper. The designer paper Most Adored is one that you can get for free during celebration. And so I shared a whole bunch of projects using that paper. Um, and this particular project was inspired by the catalog. I'm back here in the bundle index. First of all, can I just say I love that Stampin' Up! does this. All the bundles right here, so you can just kind of browse them all together. And it doesn't show you the full stamp set, but it tells you the page number and you can go find the full stamp set. But having the sample as extra inspiration is just really fantastic. Okay, so let me do a little close-up so you can see. The original card on page 67 is um, Fresh Freesia, and they used a little bit of the um, printed vellum. They stamped on the background. Well, I just substituted the, the designer paper that most adored, another piece of designer paper for um, that gold. Um, I love that gold foil on there. And then I did the same kind of cluster with the hearts, just changing up the colors. And Instead of purples, which is beautiful, instead I used some of the pink and the red. Oh, I love Casey the catalog. It's just so fun. This adoring hearts. Oh, I feel like I I was totally gonna do more Valentine's this week, but we did that last week, and I was like, okay, we gotta change it up, Julie. We gotta make something different. Um, so I have marked up my catalog with all the pages that I found ideas that I want to copy. And so I hope that you do the same thing when you look at the catalog and feel so inspired. So tonight we are gonna make three more projects using um, some of these new products. This is the one I'm gonna come back to this. I just love this stinking bee and I, <laughs> I wanna use it so bad, but again, we made a project last time and I feel like maybe too much bee. So if we have time, we're totally coming back and making this card and I think it'd be really quick and easy. So let's keep moving forward. The next project that I have marked, oh my God, I love this, is on page 22. It's this one up here, although honestly, the perennial lavender suite is just so beautiful. How many of you, thumbs up if you got Paper Pumpkin. This month in January, the Paper Pumpkin was inspired by the perennial lavender suite and so oh my gosh it's so beautiful I just got a sneak peek image in my email today from paper pumpkin I'm still waiting on my kit but I can't wait to make these beautiful cards now I know many of you have been very excited about the perennial lavender suite because of that paper pumpkin kit and so currently in US or North America the painted lavender dyes are currently unavailable to order you can still order everything else from the bundle including the stamp set the other bundle I mean the suite the stamp set the other bundle the gems the paper the butterflies you can get everything else right now um, and then the painted lavender dyes which go in that bundle are going to be available around January 29th so it's just another week or so um, it's not going to be gone very long so um, you haven't missed it. If you weren't able to order, don't worry. It's coming. Um, tonight, I'm not going to use the painted lavender. I'm not going to tease you with that, but I am going to use the perennial postage um, bundle to create our first card. Now, I love this one so much, um, of course, because it has really versatile greetings, but also we've got these fantastic dies that are not specific at all to the stamp set. So if you just love the shapes, you can get these dies and use them with any greeting set that you already have. This was something I did as an add-on to my product share, and I got a special little card kit if you added this onto your product share, either the stamp set or the bundle. Um, and 
And so I know many of you have it. In fact, if you do have it, let me know. Just say have it in the comments and let me know if you've got this bundle. Perennial postage. And again, it's on page 23 in the catalog. Well, I did some die cutting ahead of time, a little prep work so that we wouldn't have to um, get our big machine up here. And also most of these dies do fit in the, um, the mini machine. I think all of them probably, but the, the biggest two. This one might fit in the mini machine. That's gonna be a real tight fit if it does, but the smaller ones definitely do. How many of you have the little machine and not the big machine? I think a lot of you have the big machine. Um, anyway, I die cut those ahead of time and pre-cut some cardstock. So I'm using um, a piece of designer paper that is four inches by five and a quarter. Let me get the catalog out of the way and I promise I'll bring it back and we'll do some comparison because I am going to just make a few little minor changes to our project. Um, the first one being, instead of having a designer paper card front take up the whole um, the whole thing. I did cut my designer paper so that we could have a layer, a border around the um, the card front. So this is four by five and a quarter, and then the gorgeous grape is just the regular five and a half by eight and a half. And I cut two of the um, pieces, one with vellum and one with gorgeous grape. Um, and we're going to um, emboss our greeting. And I couldn't tell from the image if it was the big one or the little one. And so I actually cut two, um, two of the, um, the purple shapes and I was trying to figure out which one I liked better. So the um, I can't thank you enough is the greeting that I was going to use. And it does fit on this one, but in the catalog, it looks like it's bigger, but I feel like that's almost too, too big. And there is nothing in between. Um, we could potentially use a smaller greeting. Um, I don't know, I think I like, I just can't thank you enough. So we're gonna use that one. Um, oh no, Sandy, you haven't gotten your paper share yet. Well, it's definitely in the mail, Sandy, and um, you should have gotten a um, tracking link when I sent it through PayPal. Um, if you haven't, let me know, and I can look up the tracking link and send it to you after the video tonight. Uh, but it should be on the way and it should be arriving tomorrow. Gosh, if you haven't gotten it yet. Um, yes, I love the mini machine too, Susan. It is so perfect for just those little jobs and it doesn't take up a lot of room on the table. We are going to do some embossing tonight. I feel like I've been doing that a lot lately. Um, I mentioned last time that I finally got my, um, my new embossing powders and this is the basics embossing. Um, and so it comes with black and clear and white embossing powder. And so I'm gonna use the white one today. Um, and these jars, I know they look small, but they are really going to last you a while. You don't need, you don't need a lot of embossing powder. The embossing additions toolkit comes with the brush and the tweezers and the um, powder, powder pal? Um, not powder, this is the powder pal. What is this? Embossing buddy. I think that's what they used to call it when we had it separately. Um, Mad Dog, unfortunately, the um, subscription period for the Perennial Lavender Paper Pumpkin Kit is over. Um, you had to subscribe by January 10th to get it. However, um, I do anticipate that refills will be available near the end of the month. I think they always do it like on the last Tuesday or the second to last Tuesday or something like that. So if you subscribe to Paper Pumpkin now, then you'll be able to get the refills of the Perennial Lavender Kit and your first kit will be the February Springtime Kit, um, which has tulips and it looks like maybe Easter bunnies or something like that. Um, oh no, Janice having trouble with the, um, having trouble with your handle coming off. Um, I have not heard of troubles like that, Janice. So that's definitely something to, um, to inquire about if there, um, if there's a problem with it, um, and it's still under warranty, then Stampin' Up! will definitely take care of that. Um, Oh, <laughs> what a fun surprise, Cindy. It's like finding a $20 bill that you left in your winter coat and you totally forgot about it. I'm glad that you forgot about your product share and then got a, a surprise email with the shipping. That's fun. 
Um, all right, I did that quickly while I was talking, I'm sorry. I do use the embossing buddy to um, to put on the cardstock, and that's just to prevent the um, oil from my fingers and other things from sticking to, um, to the ink because I want only the embossing powder to stick to the ink. I stamped in Versamark ink, which is a clear watermark ink, and then I'm going to put the white embossing powder on and tap it off. And you can use the brush to brush off any little bits that seem like they're hanging on to the cardstock. Perfect. And then you can use the tweezers to hold your cardstock while you're embossing so you don't burn your fingers. <laughs> don't ask me how I know. Uh, I'm going to use the little cap to funnel the leftover embossing powder right back into my jar to use on the next project. And last time I did have some black embossing powder. So I did um, in between before I put it away. I did use a, um, like a, just a paper towel and I wiped that clean really quick. There's a stray dog hair <laughs> that has made it into my jar. Let's get out of that out of there and let's get our heat tool out. So the heat tool is what you're going to use to melt that embossing powder. And it has two settings. Well, three, I guess if you count off zero, one, and two. And so I'm going to turn it on two and heat until that embossing powder melts. I got my good lights on today so I can see what I'm doing. You can kind of see the powder go from dull to shiny and bright. And once it's all melted and looks shiny, then you're done. I love the way that white embossing powder looks on dark cardstock like this. Okay, so we are going to layer the, um, the vellum and the greeting. I think this was definitely the right size to use. I'm kind of going to offset those a little bit. So let's glue those down. And then we're going to add some embellishments. I've got the paper butterflies, the fine sparkle purple gems, and a little bit of ribbon. And actually, I should make sure to pay attention to add that ribbon underneath my embossed piece. So I'm gonna take a piece of this. This is from a combo that is in the annual catalog. And I think it was in the mini catalog last January. It has red and this crumb cake with a white stitching on it. I love it, it's so pretty. Um, and this is the ribbon that they used on the project in the catalog. So I thought I would bring it in because the background of the designer paper has crumb cake in it. And, um, and so I thought it was a nice sort of callback to that designer paper to bring it in. Oh, Sherry, thanks so much for sharing some tips. I've not had that problem. Um, and so I'm, I'm glad to see that. Oh, of course. Yes. Removing the rubber cap on the end and using... Um, an Allen wrench to reconnect those. I don't know if the mini machine comes with an Allen wrench, but the big machine does because the big machine comes with a handle off. Um, that it, That's a good plan. So I actually, with the um, big machine, I just taped the Allen wrench to the bottom of my machine so that I wouldn't lose it. So this is where, I'm just gonna point this out really quick. This is that rubber cap. Um, and now I'm probably gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna break mine. Uh, anyway, so this little rubber cap, if you remove that, that is where you can tighten up the handle um, uh, with the Allen wrench there. So um, hopefully that works for you, Janice. Um, and if not, then uh, let's let's get in touch and figure out if we can figure that out for you. Um, Michelle, thank you too for the tip on removing that plastic end. Um, okay. You guys are so good. I love the little chats that you guys have in the live chat and helping each other. It just makes me so happy. Um, I'm going to glue this designer paper to the card front. And then we're going to add the vellum layer. Now, you can see our regular adhesive through the vellum. So I want to be careful to put the adhesive in a place that I know I'm going to cover up. So right in the middle. Um, and in fact, I'm just going to rub, <laughs> rub it back a little with my, with my fingers. I'm going to add this kind of in the center toward the bottom 
And this is going to be offset then like that. And we're gonna add the paper butterfly. So let's go over just a little. And then my favorite trick with the ribbon, we're just gonna have this flat ribbon back here. My favorite little trick to do is to use some tear and tape to hold that down. Um, because I don't wanna make the card extra bulky. So no knots here. We're just going to do that tear and tape right across it. So you can also do some tear and tape underneath. Um, and we just wanna make sure it's not going to show up at all. So then I'm going to add this with some Stampin' Dimensionals and that will help just to give it a little room to breathe so that um, it doesn't pop off because we have ribbon that is bulky underneath it. So I'm going to do, to kind of bridge the ribbon, the ribbon's gonna go kind of in between. I'm gonna do those, um, we'll do four. We're just gonna be good there. Um, oh my gosh, Denise, it is negative 20 temps in Missouri. Is it still that cold? It warmed up here in Illinois. We had a, a tropical day, <laughs> not tropical, but it did warm up and we were happy for that. Um, so I hope wherever you are that um, everything is going okay. I've heard so many stories about people losing power. Oh my gosh, so scary. And um, a friend from Oregon was posting about the ice storms and all the trees crashing down. So crazy. Um, all right, I honestly love this card just as it is, but one of my favorite things um, from the new mini catalog are these paper butterflies. Guys, these are a must. Add these onto your next order. The paper butterfly accents come in white. They are laser cut, and there are eight sheets of five butterflies, five different sizes, and if you got the product share, um, you got one sheet of the five butterflies, so you could play around with this, and um, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that's enough or at least enough to give you a taste and then you can order some more. Um, so I want to use um, either this one, which I'm, I'm worried might be a little big. You guys will have to help me decide or the smaller one that's kind of the same shape. And I, yeah, I think that smaller one is just a better scale for us. Well, one of the things that they did in the catalog was to do a little sponging or a little um, blending brush to add some color around the edges of the butterfly. And I'm usually not a big sponger, but um, I thought definitely we need to add a little bit of color to this butterfly. So there are two different ways that you can do this. Um, either we're using a sponge dauber, and I have this fun little case. I don't even remember where I got this. I've had it for so long. Um, I like to just reuse with the same color. So you could use a sponge dauber or you could use um, something like the blending brush. I think I actually might use the blending brush tonight because I'm worried that the sponge dauber, I don't know, maybe the sponge dauber is a little more gentle. Um, that's what I'm worried about with this butterfly is um, it is a paper butterfly. like So it's not thick. I, I do worry. Maybe the blending brush would be too... I don't know. I think you could go either way on it. Um, let's let's try let's try the um, the dauber. <laughs> I couldn't think of the word. Um, and color wise, we got some different colors in here, including berry burst, Highland heather, gorgeous grape is the dark purple that we used. There's also a little I think a little blackberry bliss in there. Some fresh freesia. Um, so I'm debating on Highland heather or gorgeous grape. And um, oh, let's see, I, gorgeous grape maybe because we're already using that color. Gorgeous grape was in the Brights collection and it moved over to the Regals. So it's still such a great color, um, a nice dark purple. And I love, I'm just gonna do this right here on my, um, on my glass mat and just sort of, I'm not sure how well you can see, I'll hold it up so we can get a better look here. Um, just so nice and smooth here. And I'm just gonna go on the edges. Oh, I think you can see it pretty well. And I'm just kind of like gently dabbing and pulling the ink back toward the outside. And you guys know I'm not a big fan of the <laughs> of grid paper. I don't know, I just, in my videos, I don't use it very often. Look at that. <gasps> 
so pretty. I think you can see it better on the white. Um, but one of the things I love about the glass mat is then when I am done with something like this, I can just take my um, my little chamois, uh, my cleaning pad, and I can just wipe the ink right off. Oh, I love it. This is the Celebration Join offer. When you sign up to be a demonstrator, you can get the glass mat studio, which includes the mat, the silicone pad, and the cleaning cloth all in um, one package, and that's for new demonstrators who join um, during celebration. Oh my gosh, this butterfly is the perfect little touch to add here, and it's so delicate. I'm not even sure how I want to do it. So the original sample, they did use a bigger label, and then they, um, they have the butterfly attached to, um, to the label, but I think I'm going to use just some liquid glue and I am gonna put the bottom on the label and the tops um, going to rest on the, um, on the designer paper. So there is going to be a slight like height difference, um, but I think it'll be okay because this, this is on dimensionals, but it's not that, um, not that tall. So I've got some little, some little dots of adhesive and I'm going to add this to to the car, just kind of hold up for a second so those little places get attached. Oh, I really love this card. Then we are going to add some of the gems. And this is the fine, um, the purple fine shimmer gems. This comes in that suite, the perennial lavender suite. So we're gonna use this. And um, there are three different colors in here. We've got that berry burst. The middle one is the gorgeous grape. And then the other one is lighter. It's more the Highland Heather. Um, and so I know we used a lot of gorgeous grape already. I think I'm going to bring in some of the lighter purple on this one. And I'm going to add some gems. And just finish off this beautiful project with a little with a little shimmer gem. Okay, there is our finished card. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm uh, Sometimes I know I get carried away, you guys, but I just love it. This is one I pretty much copied exactly from the mini catalog. Um, it looks like maybe they used some berry burst um, around the edges and some berry burst gems, but otherwise, gosh, it is pretty much just the same. My designer paper piece has a little bit more of the um, crumb cake showing and this one has more of the flowers in the background but it is the same piece of paper. Okay so we have cased our first project tonight. We're on page 22 in the January through April mini catalog and if you love this you can get all the things to case this project if you want to make this at home. You can get all these things right now I know the perennial or the painted lavender dyes are not available, but the perennial postage is, the butterflies are, the paper, the gems. You are all set to create this card. Um, and with so many butterflies, you can just create your own version times 40. <laughs> um, let me show you really quickly. I did pull it out. The other patterns in the um, perennial lavender designer paper. Um, I used one piece. Let's see, which one did I use? I used this one, which has sort of these diagonal corners of flowers. Like sometimes we've got the flowers on the top and the flowers on the bottom and you can cut it. And this paper has the 12 by 12 flowers in each corner diagonally like that. And so you get some kind of different um, variations when you cut it into card fronts like this. It's really, really gorgeous. Like I said, this designer paper has a craft or crumb cake kind of background to it. Um, and the colors are just absolutely gorgeous. Lost Lagoon Shaded Spruce, um, along with these purples, Highland Heather, Gorgeous Grape, a little bit of fresh freesia, a little bit of berry burst, a little bit of blackberry bliss. Oh my gosh, you guys. I know you're in love, just like I am with this paper. Um, so snatch up all your favorites in the online store. If you're waiting on that painted lavender, um, the dyes or that bundle, um, it is going to be available around the 29th. 
of January, but all the other stuff, like I said, the paper, the other bundle, the butterflies, all that is still available right now in the online store. So let's keep moving on. We're going to copy or case another project idea. And this one just arrived for me. Um, I had purchased the Everyday Details dies, but I didn't get the stamp set. I wasn't going to, I was going to hold off. And mom keeps using it in her videos and sharing projects that are just so cute. And so I couldn't resist and I bought the stamp set by itself. Now I wish I had bought the bundle because of course when you buy the stamps and the dies together, you save 10%. And when you get them separately, you pay full price for both. So anyway, that's my PSA. If you like them both, just get them at the same time. <laughs> The Everyday Detail Stamp Set is a rubber stamp set with three main images, the bird nest, the teacup, and the flower vase. And the sentiments say, you make every day a little brighter, overjoyed for you in this new journey, and wishing you so much joy on this special day. There's also a stamp with three little dots. Now, the dies are what attracted me to this bundle because they are so versatile and can be used with any stamp set. And you'll see some catalog samples that show these dies um, without the stamp set at all. Like right here next door on page 29, this uh, Blueberry Bunches uses the large circle with the dots. So we've got rectangle frames, circle frames that all have these large dots, and then also a small stitch circle and rectangle, and then some other border pieces that have these large dots as well. Now I die cut one ahead of time for our project, and so you can see when I say big dots, I mean big dots. It's not stitching, it's big dots. Dots. Um, yeah, these dies are pretty amazing. Um, so the sample that I want to case today is this one right here. Um, I also have been wanting to use these gold foil cards and envelopes. And um, this is, let me see if I can find the page where they are in the catalog here. Um, and show you there are samples throughout the catalog if you look for them and sometimes with that project supply list like I was telling you about sometimes I will just search for a product I'll pull up the PDF I'll search for the product like the um, gold foiled flowers and envelopes sometimes I'll search by item number or just keyword um, and then it will bring up and show me every project that uses that product so it's kind of a fun way to look specifically especially at some of these other um, other things like the paper or the cards and envelopes like this one to kind of find them easily in the catalog because they are used throughout, not only with the suite that they're part of. So this one originally uh, is part of the Forever Love Suite. It's the gold foiled flower cards and envelopes. We have got this gorgeous laser cut envelope and a two-sided, I say two-sided, I just mean front and back, vanilla card with gold foil flowers. Oh my goodness, so gorgeous. One of the cards I thought about casing was this one right here on page 15. I just love how they colored just a few of those flowers and then added the sentiment with some ribbon and die cuts. I think it is so beautiful. But the one that I'm going to copy today is this one here with the bird's nest. So we're going to use the blending brush and blend a little bit on the background and we're going to stamp our bird nest and do some a little bit of coloring, not a lot, just a little bit, <laughs> and then add a sentiment and some sequins. So we're going to kind of keep this one clean and simple. Um, so let's start with the, um, let's start with the blending. We are going to use um, a blending brush for this one, and I, I pulled out two different blues. Um, I pulled out, um, this is for stamping the nest. I pulled out balmy blue and boho blue. And I really think the boho blue is going to be too dark. But I just love the color combination of the pecan and the boho. I think they go really nice together. But the balmy blue also looks good too. So we're, that's what we're going to use. And um, I'm going to use one of my larger blending brushes for this one. And this, it did stain, uh, but it is clean. So I always rinse them out when I'm done and wash them a little bit. 
Um, I know Fonda totally. Um, I, I did think of that cutting the cardstock and cutting the card in half and using one side for one card and the other side for the other card. Um, yes, I think that, um, that is a really great idea. In fact, you know what? Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's cut it and we'll use it. Um, and then we'll save it for another one because this was the last one in my package. I haven't made a card yet, but the other ones were all in the product shares. Um, okay, so I'm going to cut at four inches because that's what's going to go on a card front. And then um, five and a quarter. We're going to do the same thing that I was just talking about. You could have it go all the way across the cardstock, but um, I kind of love adding it onto a color card base. So alternatively, you can cut it and just use it. And let me show you. Maybe we'll do it that way. I don't know. You guys vote. <laughs> um, it does take up less room here. I'm totally going to kind of make some changes to this one. Okay. Um, why not make a Z fold? Ooh, that is a great idea. Um, okay. So the question is, would you put it on a vanilla card base or would you put it on a blue card base? And I'm kind of feeling like the thick vanilla card base. Um, Janet says she used the envelope cut out as a stencil. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh my gosh. Yes. I love that idea. We'll have to do that in another video and plan better for that. Okay. I am getting out my thick, very vanilla cardstock. Whenever I'm doing card bases, I want um, my cardstock to be heavy and thick and substantial. And so I like the thick white and the thick vanilla for, um, for those projects. Okay. So Indica suggested a Z fold. So let's add a little Z fold to our card. And, um, for a Z fold, we are going to take the, um, the card front and we are going to score it in half and so half of four and a quarter is two and one eighth and let's see if I uh, do this right so we've got um, a fold in half we'll use our fold folder here fold in half and then a Z fold we're gonna fold it back and so this we have our little Z fold like this so we can add our card base and this is what it would look like if we used the smaller one. So there's a little vanilla border around it and we would attach it just to that front. Or we could use the large piece that is four and a quarter. And so it covers the whole thing with no border. What do you guys think? Do you like no border or do you like a little bit of that vanilla border? Border or no border? Leave a comment and let me know. Um, oh, oh, oh! I see what you're saying, Inika. Use the entire card to make a Z fold um, instead of like turn it. So she's saying turn it inside out. Of course, I don't have another one to show you. <laughs> um, if you turn it inside out um, and and fold it, although I don't know how it would still be. Turn it inside out. I'm not. I'm not sure how it works, but I already cut it apart, so we're gonna we're gonna do it like this. And most of you are saying border. You like the smaller one, so I'm gonna save this for another project. We'll try to. We'll have to try. Um, we'll have to try that other way later, <laughs> Annika. Um, okay. Um, before we put it on our card. We are going to um, do our blending. And originally, this has the blending around the circle. Originally, this card is actually horizontal, but all of the flowers are vertical. They're all facing this way. And so if we cover it, it you know, you can't really tell. Um, but I think I'm going to keep it as a vertical card and have the um, and have this be up here. So instead of doing around the circle, I'm just going to do the bottom half of it with the blending 
and then like kind of blend up. So I'm gonna take some of the um, some of the ink here, and I'm going to just blend it onto our card base. Oh, I love blending. <laughs> It's so soft and pretty. And so you can start off light and just build and add your color. And I'm using my glass mat and then I can actually take and pick up that extra ink and come back and use it again. So you just keep going until you have it as dark or as light as you want. And I think I'm going to go a little darker on the bottom and then try to like gradually bring that color up, like a little bit of an ombre. Okay. Can you see? I think you can see. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but for me, looking at my camera, sometimes I can't. I can't tell how well you can see it with the lights. But I want to go a little darker. and then bring a soft glow of the color up. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm gonna take our little cleaning cloth and just give this a little swipe over here and clean it off the glass mat. It also takes up adhesive really well. Oh my gosh, I love it. Okay, so we've got that part done. Uh, the next part we're gonna do is we're going to stamp the nest. If you're just joining us, we're using the Everyday Detail Stamp Set from the January through April 2024 mini catalog. How are we already? 2024. I'm stamping this in Pecan Pie ink. And then we're going to add some color using some of our watercolor pencils. I almost never use these. Um, but one of my team members, April Booth, I think you're watching April, she uses the watercolor pencils all the time. And I always think I need to do this some more. So I'm gonna use the Balmy Blue from the watercolor um, pencil assortment number two and add some color to the eggs. So I'm going to add a little color around the bottom of the egg. And then I'm going to take a blender pen. The blender pens come in a package of three and you can use these to blend the watercolor pencils. And so I'm just going to kind of blend that color so it's softer at the top. And I'm, I, I was careful when I was coloring to make sure that I added some pencil above the, um, above the stamped lines that Stampin' Up! has in the image because I don't want to blend the brown, which would, would blend with the blender pen. I want to only blend the, um, the pencil. So this is a nice way to add just some soft color here. And this nest has some little leaves in it. And so I'm going to take the garden green and just add um, some touches of green to the leaves. And if you wanted to, you could use the blender pen and you could blend that for a softer look, but I'm just going to leave it just with a pencil. Oh, so pretty. All right. So a way to do some coloring without doing a lot of coloring, you know, and that's honestly, I, <laughs> I wasn't going to get this stamp set because I thought I don't like to color. Um, but when I saw that you can do some really soft coloring, um, without, without too much, then I thought, I okay, I can do that. Um, all right, so our card is coming together and we want to add our greeting. So I pre-cut some strips and um, the sentiment that I'm gonna use is the long one. It says, you make every day a little brighter. And I was thinking that I would use the balmy blue for this part, 
um, and bring in that blue again. So I'm going to try stamping. I cut two. One of them is a half an inch wide. And I was worried about, um, I was worried about it being big enough, but actually I think that is just right with the balmy blue. Um, oh, that is just, <laughs> it's so precious. I love it. Oh, you know, I'm going to stamp it one more time. The R is a little bit weak, a little light. So I'm going to try one more time on the back side. Oh yeah, that's better. Um, now this is a little bit long, so I'm just going to trim with my scissors. And uh, you know what this card needs? Definitely needs some twine. I think that the twine is really going to make it um, like nest-like, right? We're going to add like a double, we'll do a double bow. Um, and... I'm trying, I'm trying to read your comments and I'm not sure I'm following along the conversation. Um, <laughs> I love it when you guys are chatty in, in the comments. Okay, I am... Okay, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I cut a long piece and I'm going to do a double bow. So I'm going to cut it into two. And then I'm going to do bunny ears because that's what I do. <laughs> Actually, I'll just tie a bow. Sometimes I do bunny ears and then I tie them. So I've got a double bow, which is just two pieces put together just to make a little bit more of a, um, just a little bit more of a, a bulky, a bulky bow to it. Um, you know what? I wish that these were a little bit darker um, to go with our, um, to go with our, um, pecan pie, but you know what? I can make it darker. I can color the twine, um, with a marker. You can use the Stampin' Blends, or you can even use the Stampin' Write markers and color your twine, and I'm not going to worry about it being perfect because I just want it to have a little bit of a darker color to it. So I'm just going to kind of um, add some wisps of color to the twine and make that a little bit darker. Maybe these ends too. And this is the um, Neutrals Stampin' Right. Um, collection and I just love the new markers with the um, the new tips to them because the fine tips on the old ones just were not um, were not cutting they just would dry up so quickly um, now this could still be wet so you just have to be careful it's best to like let it dry a little bit before you use it but we don't have time for that so <laughs> I'm going to um, I'm gonna tie our bow and so now we've got this custom twine that has um, almost a two-tone to it. And if you want to, you can add some darker, um, darker color. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's just perfect. Okay. Let's get this put on our card. I am going to do... I don't want to have too many dimensionals on it. I'm going to definitely put the circle on with Stampin' Dimensionals. And then we're going to add the sentiment. And that's where I'm trying to decide if I want the sentiment to have Stampin' Dimensionals. And yes, I do. <laughs> um, okay, this is the side. That's good. And then we're going to add our twine with a glue dot. And the original card sample, I'm going to bust that out again so we can check it out. The original card sample 
um, did use some pink sequins. And so I kind of want to add, but we could do blue, although we already have, I don't know, we already have a lot of blue, but that is a reason to do the blue. Um, so I got out these sequins, the pastel adhesive sequins. And um, let me show you the sample and you guys can vote on sequins. Okay, so here's the card and you can see the sequins around the nest and they use the pink ones. Um, and so our card is a little different with its layout, but we still use the same technique and the same stamp set. Um, so tell me what you think. If you like the sequins, should we use pink or should we use blue? While you guys are leaving me a comment and letting me know, I'm going to add the um, card to the Z fold. And so for this, we only want to put adhesive here on this side. And we don't want to um, glue the whole thing because then our card is glued closed and that would be sad. So I'm going to use some tear and tape just to make sure that it stays on. Um, and so let's... Let's get a couple pieces out, kind of spacing them out, also making sure that I have a border so I'm not totally um, putting my adhesive all the way to the edge because then we run into problems. We voted on the smaller piece, so I do have a little, very vanilla border all the way around the card. Okay. Oh, you guys are overwhelming with your agreement on the blue sequins. Janet says pink. I was kind of leaning towards pink. <laughs> oh, gold would be good too. Um, let's, I, I don't have many gold. I think I just have one, <laughs> maybe two. Oh, I do have five, but they're all big ones. Um, this does have two sheets. There are small ones and big ones. Um, since most of you are saying blue, let's go ahead and add um, some of the blue sequins around the, um, that we need a small one up there. Oh, oh, this card turned out so sweet. I love it. You make every day a little brighter and we've got a fun little Z fold. Um, I know it's a little different, but um, I kind of love it. Okay, so this card came from the gold cards and envelopes. So you can reuse this envelope and you can um, send your card in this, or I love Janet's idea of using the envelope as a stencil. That's so smart. Um, and so let's pull this out and let's take a look and see how this compares to our original inspiration. I had intended to do a pretty basic copy on this one, but we did make some changes. So we cut the card front apart. Then we made it a vertical card instead of a horizontal card. We also added the Z fold, fun fold in there. I changed the colors a little bit. I'm not sure. They used a darker blue here. My guess is actually probably blueberry bushel. Instead, I used balmy blue. And um, it almost looks a little greenish here with the sponging. Um, some watercolor pencils to color the eggs and the leaves. And we added some sequins. We also added the twine, which wasn't part of the original card, but I think that it's... Um, definitely adds a little nesty kind of feel to it. Um, oh, what a great idea, Inika. It would be such a beautiful card for um, someone expecting a baby boy. I love that idea, um, especially with the blue eggs and the blue sequins and the, the blue theme. It would be really gorgeous for a baby shower. Great idea. Okay, this was card number two. Um, I guess we're stamping slow tonight. <laughs> card number two, we are casing the catalog tonight. That means we're taking our inspiration from projects in the catalog and creating um, them in new ways and kind of making them our own. So are you guys ready to see the next card that we're going to case? Um, I have I have labeled many pages on this catalog. We are in the January through April 2024 mini catalog, and I've got lots of pages marked um, as projects that I want to copy and case. 
Um, I think we have time just for one more. And so the next one I think we're going to do is the cake fancy card. Um, and this one is one that I feel really inspired by and um, I actually made a card with it already. Um, and I love the bright colors, but I was really inspired by the card samples here, which is why I got it. I love this kind of two-step stamp where you're building an image with the cake and the different dessert. Um, and so the one that I want to copy today is this one right here. I love that it looks like a chocolate cake. And so we are going to build this card. Um, and we're going to have to do a little fussy cutting because there are fussy cut pieces here. And we are going to use some of the twine. Um, I've got my stamps picked out and some cut cardstock. We're actually going to use the same designer paper that we used on the first card, but we're going to use the other side of it. Um, and so I've got a crumb cake card base, and then I also used the deckled rectangles to die cut um, a piece here. Hopefully I got the right size. I couldn't tell. Possibly we might need a bigger piece, um, but I think I think that's going to work. And then um, I need to put my stamps on. So let's do that now. We are going to use um, the cake frosting, the cake layer. Then there is some side frosting. Oh my gosh. This is such a fun set. It's like baking a cake, but um, it's calorie free. <laughs> um, so... I'm going to put all these on here. What is your favorite kind of cake? If you got to pick a flavor, what flavor would you pick? Uh, my favorite cake is a carrot cake. I love carrot cake. Um, fun fact, actually, chocolate, I love chocolate, but chocolate cake is not necessarily my favorite. Um, because I like my chocolate to be fudgy, like a brownie. And so, um, oh, <laughs> I was so confused. Enjoy your special day is actually two different stamps. I thought it was one long stamp. Okay, I'm pulling out the flower and the sentiment and the leaves. And we're going to, um, we're going to stamp some of these here. Um, all right, let's see. Favorite cake flavors. Now I want cake. <laughs> this was a bad topic of conversation. <laughs> Denise says red velvet. Annika likes chocolate. Sharon says carrot cake or lemon. Oh, both good choices. German chocolate cake for Sherry. Spice cake for Jaylene. Yes. Um, Lori, all cakes, right? <laughs> carrot cake, German chocolate, lemon. Uh, I know, right? It's Fonda. It's so true. I... There are really are very few, if any, cakes that I don't like. I would eat any, um, any cake. <laughs> we have had to modify our family buttercream recipe, though, because my Anna um, has a sensitivity to, um, to dairy. And especially, she has a lot of issues with butter. Um, and so especially butter that isn't baked in any way, um, she really just, it gives her such a stomach ache. And so, um, we've had to use like a dairy free butter for frosting and, um, a dairy free milk. And so it just, it changes and it's not quite the same. Um, but we, I don't know, I've made some pretty good dairy free buttercream, I think. Um, oh, chocolate with peanut butter icing. Okay, I could be down for a chocolate cake if it had peanut butter icing on it. That does sound delicious. Um, we are going to start with building our cake. And so I'm going to put these aside for right now. And so our cake is three stamps. We've got the layer, which we're going to stamp twice. And then we have the frosting, which is going to go on top. And then we have the little side piping of frosting. And all of this is going to go in crumb cake ink on the crumb cake cardstock. And honestly, I don't know if I need to re-ink. I'm going to practice on the back um, and see if my ink pad is... Um, Oh, see, look how light that is. Let's do some quick re-inking with the crumb cake ink. 
um, so that we can make sure that we have a good image. My crumb cake reinker. I need some more crumb cake reink. This is such a great time to stock up on reinkers and cardstock and adhesive during celebration because you get extra stuff. I love celebration, free stuff when you shop, and so definitely this is the time. Paper pumpkin prepaid subscriptions, restock your cardstock cabinet. Oh, you don't have a cabinet of cardstock? <laughs> I do. Um, <laughs> I do have a cardstock. I probably have almost as much cardstock um, <laughs> as I do stamp sets, I think. Um, but however many packages of cardstock you normally have, it's good to, um, to keep some extra on hand. Oh, that is almost too dark now. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Julie, what did you do? Okay. Low cal yogurt. <laughs> I know cake does sound good, but um, this stamp is one of those distinctive images. And so it is intended to have some spots that are darker than others. And so you're going to notice that on the stamp and that is normal. But oh my goodness, for this stamp, it does make it super juicy. Oh, you know what? I'm going to go for it. And I think that as it dries, it will dry a little bit lighter. So let's trust that. Okay. Oh, let's not make a mess on our hands here. Let's just wipe that up. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go in the center, a little right of the center, I think a little, not right in the center. Okay. And I'm going to stamp um, two layers and then I'm going to add the frosting on top. And we're going to add the piping on the side. I wish that this was, you know what? I'm just gonna add a little more. Why not? <laughs> it's our card. We can do what we want. Um, okay, next up, we are going to do those flowers and leaves. And I chose Berry Burst ink and Old Olive for that. So I'm going to grab some white cardstock scraps. Um, let's see. Here we go. That's a smaller piece. For the sentiment, I'm going to cut... Um, I'm going to cut a piece that is a half inch and I'm going to test our enjoy and yeah, I think actually that's going to be good. I don't want it to take up too much room. So a half inch is a good width for this. And so with the old olive ink, I'm going to stamp three leaves, one, two, three, and then I'm going to stamp enjoy and your special day. I get, sorry if you see my head, I gotta make this straight. Enjoy your special day. Okay, next we're going to do two of the Berry Burst. I'm gonna do three just in case. One, two, three. This distinctive stamp is um, really pretty because you have the lighter petals and then the darker lines and all of that is built in. That was one stamp and you get kind of that fun little variation. Okay, we're going to do some quick fussy cutting. I wish I had these Magic of TV done for you, but I don't. So I'm going to do my best to be um, really quick about this cutting with just a little border um around them and I know I ask it every time I do fussy cutting but do you guys tell me yay or nay do you like fussy cutting do you <laughs> do you avoid it this stamp set the cake fancy it does not have coordinating dies um it is just a standalone stamp set and so that means we do have to do 
some fussy cutting. Oh, I know a lot of you have scanning cuts. Um, and scanning cut, you can stamp a bunch and then it scans it and it cuts them out for you. And that is brilliant. Um, I do not have such a device. Um, so I have to do my, I have to do my fussy cutting. I don't mind it, but, um, I, I like fussy cutting better than I like coloring. <laughs> um, but I, um, I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't hate it, but I don't love it. I know some people will just sit and fussy cut while they're watching TV or doing something else and kind of multitask. And that's a great idea. Or if you have an artistic um, child or grandchild who loves um, cutting and doing fine, um, fine motor things like this, that's a great job <laughs> to hand off um, to, to a grandkid or a kid. Um, I should see if my girls want to cut some things out for me. <laughs> They used to be more enthusiastic about helping me. And they do love coloring with the blends, but um, honestly, they're so busy with all their activities that most of the time they just are not interested in um, what I'm doing. <laughs> but we do have some fun stamping together every now and then. Okay, got the flowers, Jen. We're going to get the, um, we're gonna do the leaves really quick next. Oh, Annika, I hear you. I do find some days, um, I'm not even that old and I have arthritis that bothers me sometimes when I do too much. You know, the thing that I find bothers me the most is writing. Um, when I'm writing out cards, writing thank you cards, um, sometimes I have, I have to take a break because my hand hurts from, um, from writing. So Fussy cutting, I guess I haven't, <laughs> I haven't had any marathon fussy cutting sessions that have hurt my hands, but, um, writing definitely, I've got to pace myself with that. Um, yay. <laughs> oh, Lori says she fuzzy cuts. <laughs> That's funny. Um, okay, so another question when it comes to, to fussy cutting or detailed cutting, if you don't like the word fussy, um, do you like to leave a border around your image or do you like to cut right up to the stamp image? Um, I usually leave a border when I cut and um, my mom, when she die cuts even, sometimes she trims her die cuts um, so that they're tighter and closer to the um closer to the image so i'm curious what do you guys do when you cut out images do you cut pretty close or do you like the border um do you like to add a border around your images you can leave a comment and let me know what you think whether you're watching live or watching the replay and hey i'm almost done here but if you haven't already and you're still watching <laughs> Go ahead and just hit that like button um, on the video. It really helps me out on the YouTube channel when you guys um, like the video, when you engage and leave comments. And also, um, of course, subscribe. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, and if you want notifications of when I go live or when new videos are posted, you can click on the bell, ring the bell for notifications. So... A little quick little YouTube plug on there. <laughs> all right, we're all done. It's time to kind of put our card together. And I'm going to add the um, the designer. Whoa, okay, we're out. <laughs> that was the end of that roll. Let's get a new one. Uh, our stamp and seal refills. If you haven't had a refill yet, um, the case comes apart. And you can add the refill um, inside the case. So I'm going to line up the holes with the pegs on the dispenser. And then, um, oh, oh, I already got some on there. <laughs> um, and then add the other half of the case, piece that back together. And we're good to go. And you can just start rolling it. So, boop, just like that. Okay. All right, on our cake, 
we're going to do the enjoy your special day kind of off to the side over here and we're going to add um we're gonna add one of the um flowers up here and um one of them up here and of course we need to have um we need to have some gems or something on there and so let's get that out. I, I know I cut three the original sample actually has a a smaller flower up here and so I was debating whether to have a cluster of the flowers um so you you guys tell me what you think do you like the two flowers up top because one two this would be a third over here or um or is one up here and one down here? Is that enough? Um, I'm going to grab out some gems while you guys are letting me know. And let's see. And the gems I'm going to use are these. The Rainbow Adhesive Back Dots. This is from the Lighter Than Air, that hot air balloon um, suite. And so it's got some, um, some fun colors in it. I think I'm gonna use the yellow dots for the center. <laughs> I knew you guys were all gonna say three. I don't even know why I bothered asking. Oh, I, it's so funny. I tell you guys something one time and you just never let me forget it. <laughs> Oh, I'm just kidding. Okay, uh, we are going to do a small one on that one that's kind of peeking out from behind. And the original card does have some, um, it does have some um, twine on it. And so we're gonna bring in some of that twine on this card as well. Oh, I busted. Busted the plastic there. There we go. Let's get that back on there. Okay. Uh, we're going to add some twine here. And um, for this one, I'm going to do kind of like a really long bow. And add it behind the bottom flowers and the sentiment. So uh, big loops, big, um, big tail. And we're going to put it like back here, like that. Maybe a little bit smaller. Okay. I, I honestly am thinking that this cake looks so dark. And can you tell it's cake still? I hope. Um, oh, Cindy. <laughs> She says she needs to get her eyes checked because she thought the background was a silhouette of a landscape. No, oh, this, the stamped image that, <laughs> the cake. <laughs> I just said, does it look like a cake? No, apparently not. But it does, I, I see what you are seeing. <laughs> and it does look like um, one of those landscape uh yes like a mountain range uh but this is the card that we're casing and um I, like i was just saying it, i think it's so hard because we're covering up so much of the cake it is supposed to be a cake slice does it look like cake is it cake <laughs> we used to watch that show on um on netflix with the girls okay let's get this down cake or not we're almost done with it and <laughs> it is what it is at this point um i'll send it to somebody with bad eyes and they'll think i sent them flowers and mountains <laughs> um <laughs> well that's why i was concerned honestly about uh, the um the two flowers at the top because we cover up so much but maybe Maybe one isn't any better, does it? Because it still doesn't look like cake. <laughs> I don't know. Um. Okay, but we're like I said, it's too late. We're we're almost done. We're I'm going with it. I'm going with it. We're gonna be, we're gonna be done. Um. Okay. This is going to go on with Stampin' Dimensionals. 
and um, I'm gonna use just the edge, the edge of it here. <laughs> um, you know. Okay, I we're gonna have some redemption for this stamp set because it is a cute stamp set. I swear. Um, and so next time we make a card, we will make something that definitely resembles cake. Um, <laughs> and it'll be better. Well, the other one I showed you, that one definitely looks like cake. See, this is, the, it's the same stamp set. Um, but I, I mean, I, I see what you guys are saying. I do. So this is not sticky. What's wrong with this? Let's add another to the end okay. okay we are going to do um that was up here and this one's going to be down here and i think the best option is going to be some glue dots i like glue dots for small pieces like this because Um, it's easy to kind of maneuver. Okay, and then here I'm going to have the smaller one that we're going to overlap. That's going to be on a glue dot, but this one is going to be on a dimensional. <laughs> um, and... <laughs> We are going to, I'm, I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to show more of the edge of the cake. Maybe that makes it look more cake-like. And then um, we'll do a glue dot for the other leaves. It's a very fancy, a very fancy cake with the leaves. And some Stampin' Dimensionals underneath the whole thing. <laughs> Okay, now you guys are really, um, really going off the deep end. Exhaust from a car or a truck? Oh, oh no. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, uh, I agree, Janet. It is the sample in the catalog and not necessarily the way I stamped it because that one looks the same. Um, I don't know. I thought it looked like fun, yummy chocolate cake, so... Um, well, anyway, we're done. <laughs> we're done. And, um, and hopefully whoever I send it to will see cake and not mountains and not car exhaust or, <laughs> or anything else except what it is intended to be. Enjoy your special day. I do agree, Melanie. The cake stand definitely would help it make make it look more cake-like. Um, next time, next time. This one does have a cake stand, and we see clearly that it is a cake, and it has candles on it, which which is fun. Um, okay, let's take a look. We're gonna um hold this up to the catalog sample. And this one, I just did case it almost exactly. The one thing I did change specifically on this one was the size um, because sometimes the catalog samples use um, different card sizes, like the different size cardstock that we have in other markets in Europe and South Pacific. And so this one definitely is more narrow than um, a, a a card in the US usually is. So I did the, the standard size card, which is a little bit wider. And so you can see this one just looks a little skinnier and longer, but otherwise I did copy it. I left off that yellow flower, I guess, um, and did change the flower location. Maybe do I need to move this flower down and, and get it off of the cake? But it, does that make it look more It doesn't matter, does it? <laughs> oh, I don't know. What do you guys think? Okay, quickly, quick feedback. Should the flower go up here where I had it? Or do you like it better down here where it's not covering up the cake so much? Um, oh, oh, get out from under there. Um, 
Okay, so quick, quick comment up or down on the flower and you can let me know. I actually tore that, but I don't think you can tell. It just looks like the <laughs> the mountain or the cake. Um, <laughs> the mountain, the flower slid off the mountain. Oh my goodness. Okay, well, let's review. We did three cards, but I shared a whole bunch of different ways that you can case um, card ideas from the mini catalog. And so I hope that um, no matter... Um, what you saw tonight, whether it was mountains or cake, that you feel inspired to case the mini catalog or any catalog for that matter. There's so many, um, so many ways to case, whether it's the layout or the color inspiration or the technique. Um, and so I hope that you were inspired not only by tonight's projects, but also to inspire you to create your own case projects from the mini catalog. If you're a Jubal and Stamp or a team member, that's our challenge this month. Um, so case a project, take a picture and share it in the group for a chance to win a prize. Um, <laughs> yes, Annika, your cardstock is a little bit different there. And so that does create for just slightly different card measurements. Um, all right, if you're tuned in late, you'll have to go back at the very beginning of the video. I did share some other ideas um, where I also cased the catalog. Um, and so all of, all of these cards are ones that were inspired um, by by those catalog projects. Um, and again, don't forget to check out the um, supply list link. You can get that in the video description right now. Um, if you are looking for specifics about what colors and stamp sets and dyes and things are used on those catalog projects. Um, thanks so much for being here tonight. I really enjoyed um, creating with you and I hope you enjoyed the projects that I created. If you did, please, please, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on future card making videos. This Sunday with Sunday Stamping with Susan and Julie, Mama and I are going to be sharing projects with level two celebration gifts. So be sure to tune in at noon central time on Sunday to see what we create. I look forward to chatting with you then. Have a great night. Bye.